We will go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to Power Yoga. I'm so, so happy we're all here together and assembling together to have a nice community yoga session. Just always, uh, always uh, an opportunity to just get together and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share this practice with you uh, today. It's always my pleasure to do so. So I look forward to sharing this and I hope you find something that you're looking for. Gonna be hitting on the neck a little bit, hitting on the shoulders a little bit in the middle part of our back today. So hopefully that if you're feeling some tightness there, that will, will help you open up. All right, so let's go ahead and begin and find a comfortable spot. A comfortable spot, either seated position, lying down position. You can also be in child's pose, child's pose. And what we're trying to do initially is just to settle in, to settle our bodies, to settle our minds, to find some stillness of our bodies so that we can reach into some of those spaces, not only within our body, but within our mind and begin to connect the two together. Our theme for today is one of our yamas, one of our principles called satya, which means truthfulness, truthfulness. And I always like to start when I talk about satya, just a reminder that yoga is the journey of the self, through the self, and to the self. And there's nothing selfish about any of that, about taking care of ourself and providing that self-care. But as we provide that self-care, it's important that you are here. You are here. Because it's hard to do yoga if you are not here. And when I say you in this context, that's the true authentic nature of you, as opposed to who you, who you might have been in the past and who we may have expectations to be. In essence, we're seeking to find our authentic self on our mats today. Because if it's you that's not here, then who else is here? And if it's you that's not here, then as we get into the postures, we risk the opportunity of injury, we risk the opportunity of missed expectations, disappointments, and create an environment to where we really can't focus on the journey of the self, through the self, and to the self. So I'm reminded of this quote, that pride and ambition will get us hurt, and humility will get us well. So if we put satya, or truthfulness, into practice on our mat, that is an exercise in humility. Allowing our postures then to become the embodiment of the balance between holding on and letting go. Action and non-action. Ambition and restraints. And what is required to achieve this balance is not only the commitment to humility, but also the commitment to our own version of our truth. After all, these postures do not define who we are. And they have nothing to do with our spiritual growth. But what is important is that we develop this good relationship with ourselves on our maps. And so it's a, that's allowing ourselves then to find that gratitude, that acceptance of who we are on our maps. There's no expectations and there's no judgment of you today with your yoga practice. That should be freeing. That should allow us to just break the bonds of some of those pains, so to speak, with expectations and judgments. Allowing us to just simply move freely and be who we are on our mats. Very nice. We'll continue our practice this morning in a seated position. So let's go ahead and find that seated position. If you're lying down, I'm going to turn the lights up and we'll get started with our physical practice. From this physical, or from the seated position, we'll begin our physical practice. Just go ahead and start sitting nice and tall. Good posture in that seated position. Ears over shoulders and right above those hips. Sit nice and tall, nice long spine. Let's bring those hands to prayer and just begin warming up our hands a little bit. Just moving them past each other. And we'll start with a couple of exercises for the hands and then we're gonna start working in to those shoulders, deeply into those shoulders today. Good. 
So let's bring those hands to stillness, right to our heart center. And we'll start with our hands and wrists. So we'll open up the hands like we're opening up a book and then point our fingers down towards the ground and just circle our hands through, circle our wrists through. And so just beginning to work, fingertips down and around, keeping that connection with our hands uh, together. And then while we're doing this, begin to focus on deepening our breath, deepening our inhales and our exhales. By the way, if you haven't started the playlist already, my apologies, I forgot to share that yesterday, I forgot to share it today. Go ahead and start that. Go ahead and start that. Good. Just a couple more times right here in this direction, and then we're going to challenge the mind already. Let's switch directions. So we open the book away from you, fingertips down, and then circle around. Good. Just working those wrists a little bit. Just starting to wake up those hands and those wrists. And then we're going to start working on the rest of the body real soon. Real soon. Good. Let's come to stillness, hands back to prayer. With these hands to prayer, press those hands together, get some energy going, fingertip to fingertip, and those knuckles, those third knuckles of the palms together as hard as we can. Just push those hands together and feel that tension. Feel that tension. Part of working on our shoulders is not only mobility, but strength, and so we're going to work on both aspects of that today. Not only just directly through our shoulders, but the middle of our back, and then up through the front of our shoulders and our chest. With those nice, dynamic, strong hands, let's drive those fingertips straight up overhead. Keep those palms together, and then bring those biceps right to the side of your ears. Keep those hands pressing together. Now again, find the true expression of this posture for you. If you have shoulder mobility issues, maybe those biceps are not next to the ears. Keep pressing those hands together. Good. And think about that nice deep inhale and exhale now. Now let's place a little bend in our elbows. Now bring those hands behind our neck, keeping those elbows pointed right up toward the sky. And then drawing those elbows back just a little bit more, still working those shoulders. A little squeeze between those shoulder blades. Excellent. And now with that right hand, go ahead and release that right hand and just a little pressure on your left elbow. Just reaching in, getting more of a shoulder stretch and a tricep stretch. Big deep breaths here. Still reaching into those lungs and developing that three-part breath. Let's go ahead and switch the other side. So the left hand on the right elbow, drawing that elbow up toward the ceiling and back behind you. Be gentle on these shoulders. Let's not push those shoulders to the brink. We're just getting them working. Just getting them warmed up. Good. Now let's bring those hands now to the side. Just shake those arms out just for a little bit. Good. Loosen up that neck a little bit. And then we're going to fan our arms up and gen do a gentle twist. So inhale all the way up and then just twist it to the left, staying right there. Staying right there. And go ahead and bring your left ear to your left shoulder. Staying right here with that right hand on the outside of your left leg and that left hand on the ground or mat be beneath you. Left ear, left shoulder, good stretch on that right side through the neck and shoulder. Inhale up nice and tall, exhale, and gentle twist to the right side. Again, right ear, right shoulder. And let's continue to flow through that inhale. And exhale to the left, left ear, left shoulder. And inhale. And exhale, gentle twist, right ear, right shoulder. Continue on. Inhale. And exhale. One more time to the left, left ear, left shoulder. And inhale and exhale to the right. Good. Right ear, right shoulder. Let's face right back, front and center again. Bring those arms out nice and wide, palms up toward the sky, and then bring those fingertips on top of our shoulders. Start drawing some circles with those elbows. Not necessarily connecting movement and breath, but just reminding ourselves to come back to that three-part breath, that deep inhale and exhale. Go ahead and switch directions on those circles. Good. 
We're just kind of oiling the Tin Man here in these shoulder ball joints of ours. And again, shoulder health is in through the neck, through the shoulders, the front side through our chest muscles, stretching them out, and then the middle of our back. Let's come to stillness. We're going to tap our elbows in front. Exhale. Tap them together. Inhale. Squeeze between those shoulder blades. Draw those elbows to the back of the room. Exhale. Maybe round through the spine a little bit. Inhale. Arch that lower back, almost like a cat in cow motion. We're going to get deeply into that in a little bit. Inhale, arch back, and exhale, round through the spine. A couple more inhales and exhales. Good. One last time. Inhale and exhale. Now we're going to build some heat up in those shoulders. Let those hands just fall. Shake those arms out a little bit. Good. And then T arms again, but our palms facing the sides of the room. Fingertips up toward the ceiling. And just hold those arms out there. Reach as if we're trying to reach the sides of the room. And then little circles, little circles. That's right, gym class arm circles. Because not only is shoulder health mobility, but also strength, so building up the heat. And then with these circles, start making those hands go higher and higher and up overhead. Reaching just straight overhead with those circles. And then back down to the side. And then switch directions on those circles. Maybe make them a little bit bigger. Maybe you're feeling a little heat right here. Maybe a little tapas, as we talked about last week. And start drawing those hands up to the ceiling. Reaching, circling overhead. Whoo, feeling something there. Bring them back down, out to the sides. Keep those circles going. And then hold those arms out, stillness on those arms. Bring our left ear to our left shoulder. Good. Take that left hand and gently set it on your right ear, a little pressure on the right side with that left hand. Keep reaching that right hand as if you're trying to touch that side wall. Keep reaching. Let's bring that left hand back. Tell that left wall to talk to the hand. And then bring that right ear to our right shoulder. And take that right hand now, bring it on the top of our left ear and a little pressure, just reaching with that left hand as far as you can. Outstanding. Very nice. Bring those hands back to a prayer. Shake those arms out a little bit. All right. Good. Now behind our back, we're going to interlock those fingers. So let's come behind our back, interlock those fingers, and then draw those hands down, almost touching the mat behind us. Drawing our shoulders down and away from our ears, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Now if it's a challenge to interlock your fingers here, just set them on your hips or your, where your kidneys are, and draw your elbows behind you, as if you're trying to tap your elbows behind you. Good. And now... With these interlocked hands, bring that interlocked fist to the outside of your left ribs. To the outside of your left ribs. You might be able to see that. I'm going to turn to the side just a little bit. Good. So you can see that now. It's just right to my left hip. And then I'm going to draw my chin to my chest and, and exhale my left ear to left shoulder. So create a little wing and keep that tension on those hands. Use that left hand to pull the right hand. Keep that tension right there. Keep pulling on that right hand. Let me draw that left elbow out a little bit into a wing. Relax your jaw, space between your teeth. Deep stretch into the neck and that right side shoulder. Good. On our next exhale, let's bring those hands back to neutral and then bring them to our right hip. Those hands are still interlocked. I'm going to turn to the side, right to our right hip and a wing to the right side. Exhale, our chin to our chest and right ear, right shoulder. Of course, the nature of where we're at right now, working from home, perhaps not the best setup at home, sitting in chairs perhaps, or desks that we're not used to. We're hunched over devices a lot, whether it's iPads or phones or computers. 
And so that hunches our shoulders over, we round through our shoulders, round through our spine. And so let's exhale and come out of this. And when we round more, what happens is we shorten those chest muscles and we lengthen those back muscles and that doesn't necessarily help to strengthen those back muscles. When they're stronger, it helps our shoulders roll back and down. Good, both hands right here to the front of our shins or just right there, just below the knees. And from here, we're gonna do a more energetic cat and cow. So we're gonna pull with those hands and arch our back and lift our heart up to the sky. Trying to feel those elbows trying to crawl back behind your ribs, squeezing between those shoulder blades. And then as we exhale back, just lean all the way back, let those arms lengthen and get that stretch between those shoulder blades. It's okay to round. I'm gonna to turn to the side in a moment so we can see what that looks like. Good, inhale, arch and pull on those knees. Lift up as if we're drawing those elbows back. Good, and then just sit back into it. Allow your body to stretch you out. Round through that spine, engage our core. And let's flow through this now. Inhale, pull back or pull up. And exhale, pull back. And so with this new mode of working for the foreseeable future, it's important to take care of our shoulder health, take care of our posture, okay? Loosen up those areas, creates not only strength, but mobility. Just flow through this inhale as we look up and exhale as we look down. Let's do that one more time. One more time. Inhale up and exhale and around. Good. All right, still in this seated position. Let's do an engaging breath, something to really start helping us heat up our bodies, bring our hands to prayer and our elbows together right in front of us. Still a cat and cow motion with our back and our shoulders, but two inhales through our nose and two exhales out our mouth. And then inhale. And inhale, look up. And exhale, round down, look down. Feel the heat, feel that dynamic tension as if we're wrapping our hands around a basketball or soccer ball, pushing against that imaginary energy right there. Inhale and exhale. Two more, inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Hands to heart center, very nice. All right, we're gonna come up to a standing position. Just go ahead and take your time coming up to a standing position. From a standing position, just anywhere in front of our mats works fine for me. We can have a nice uh, separation of those feet about hip distance apart. And we're gonna inhale both hands up and exhale. Just the right hand down, reach those left fingertips up toward the sky up toward the sky, look at those left fingertips, and press our hips to the left side and the weight of our body into our left foot. Now let that right arm just hang out right beside your body. Just let it hang down, just crawling down your leg. And that will come into play in just a moment right here. Good. So as we come back, keep that right hand there, bring that left hand behind your back and try to grab onto your left or right forearm with your left hand. Good. Create a little bind right there, and then bring your chin to your chest and exhale right ear to right shoulder. So you can see my left hand onto my forearm, my right hand right there. Just reaching into that left side. Excellent. Let's release right there. Inhale, both hands up nice and tall. Exhale, the left hand down only. Look at the right fingertips and press our hips to the right side. Weight of our body shifting to that right foot and that left arm just hanging out beside us. Breathe into those ribs. Stretch that side body out. Feel those ribs expand, those muscles between our ribs. Good. Reach it nice and tall, as tall as we can get. Maybe just a little bit higher. And as we come back to neutral and stand tall, bring that right hand behind your back and interlock onto that left 
forearm, even the left wrist if you're able to. Good. And then exhale, chin to our chest and left ear, left shoulder. Just yet again, reaching into the neck and those shoulders. I go ahead and stay right there. I'm going to turn to the side. Feet about hip distance apart. As we release and stand tall, we're going to interlock those fingers yet again, okay? Or just bring them right onto your kidneys. Interlock those fingers and draw those hands past our tailbone, naturally drawing our shoulders down and away from our ears and lifting our hearts. Lengthen our spine as tall as we can. Try to be as tall as you can with the crown of your head. As we forward fold, take a nice big inhale and keep the length of your spine to your tailbone nice and long, soft, bending those knees as we come on down. And as we get to the bottom of that forward fold, let those hands float up. If it bothers those shoulders, then don't do it. Don't do it. There's an answer right there. That's being true to you on your mat. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Good. So floating those hands up, letting the crown of your head fall, and just finding a little relaxation in this forward fold. Excellent. Now, at any point in time you want to release those hands, you certainly can. And bring them down to the ground, around the shins, around the block. And then let's all release our hands and bring them down towards the ground. And we're just going to step back to a plank position and lower all the way down. Lower all the way down. Yeah. And now I'm going to turn it to just a slight angle right here so you can see this. So we're going to do a version of uh, Cobra Pose, but with our hands out a little wider, elbows up, and on our fingertips, cupcake hands as they're called. And so squeezing between our shoulder blades, try and feel that squeeze between your shoulder blades toward the middle of your back, feet stay on the floor, and then peel our shoulders and chest off the mat, pressing into those fingertips and squeezing between those shoulder blades. Just a nice, gentle, engaging move right here. Exhale and release down. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale as we lift up and just adjust those hands to make it feel a little more workable for you. Elbows high, squeeze between those shoulder blades. Exhale and release down. So this not only strengthens between those shoulder blades, inhale on up, but it starts to lengthen through the front of those shoulders and our chest muscles. So a lot of times, again, when we hunch over, you know, we, we're not necessarily conscious of the fact that we're doing that, but uh, it, just, it just sort of happens sometimes, just a natural tendency. It could be just our general demeanor. It's not only our physical posture, but our mental posture. Exhale, release, down. Perfect. Good. And now bring those hands right there by those shoulders. Curl those toes, drive those heels, and bring our whole body together, engaged as one and press right up to plank position. Plank position, boom. There we go, you can also be on your knees right here. Now, to heat up those shoulders a little bit more, plus a little stretch, let's take that left hand and just set it on our tailbone. So a single arm plank. Just rest it on your tailbone, maybe wrap it around your waist, just to get a little bit of shoulder mobility there. Then from here, make sure we got a nice, strong right hand, right shoulder, bring our ears right next to that right bicep, press back downward dog. Press back downward dog, single arm dog right here. There we are. And then press on back to that plank and set that left hand down. Bring that right hand to our tailbone. Strong hand right here. And then press up, single arm plank, or single arm down dog. There we go. Arm right by that left bicep and come right back to plank. And let's just float through that a little bit, alternating sides. Left hand to the tailbone, press back, come right back to plank, and switch hands. Get a little bit more mobility and stretching, as well as engaging our body together for a little strength. And we'll go one more time on each arm. Very nice. And then let's set both hands down plank and then come back to down dog, both hands. And let's bring those ears between those arms and begin pedaling those heels. 
pedaling those heels. Anybody feeling some heat in those shoulders right now? I certainly am, but they feel pretty darn good. Usually when we get the down dog, I'm still kind of working them out, but they're already feeling really nice. All right, on our next inhale, we'll look forward and step forward towards the front. The head of our mat, sweep those hands up, reverse that swan dive, and exhale to heart center. Let's work through our sun ace. Inhale up nice and tall, and exhale and forward fold. Inhaling up to a flat back and exhale. Set those hands down, step back to plank. You can always go right from here to down dog or follow me, inhale, rock forward. Exhale from our knees or toes, a little half push up for chaturanga. And then inhale to cobra on our knees or upward facing dog on the shoelace side of our feet. Curl those toes, ears between those arms, hips to the sky, downward facing dog and then exhale. Inhale, step forward, sink into those legs. Exhale and sweep up nice and tall and exhale to heart center. Inhale, shoot those hands up, and exhale and fall. Inhale, up the flat back, and exhale, hands down, step back to plank. Starting to carve out the true nature of our own sun. Eh? Inhale, rock forward, inhale, half push up, inhale, look up, exhale, face back down to downward dog, and then inhale and step forward, sink into those legs, exhale, and inhale on up. Good. Adding some pace, inhale and exhale, fold. Inhale up, flat back, exhale, hands down, bring it on back. Inhale, rock forward, exhale, come down. Inhale, look up, exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, we can step or hop forward, sink into those legs and sweep up nice and tall, right back to our heart center. Inhale, reach nice and tall, exhale and fall. Inhale, up, flat back, and exhale, bring it back, plank position. Rock and roll forward, protecting those shoulders. Exhale down, inhale, lift up that crown. Exhale back to down, word dog. Inhale, step or hop forward and sink into those legs. Reach for the sky and exhale right back to heart center. Let's go one more time as we inhale up and exhale fold. Inhale up, flat back and exhale, step it back. We'll go through our vinyasa flow, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Okay. All right, so from this downward facing dog stand right here, we're going to take that right heel and float it up forward to the sky for a three-legged dog. Let's go ahead and put a bend in our knee and open our hip as if we're trying to press that foot against the side wall. Get a nice stretch on that right side and even a deeper stretch into our shoulders. That's right. And then we'll draw that right knee to our elbow twice. So on the exhale, bring that right knee to our right elbow and inhale, float that heel up. One more time. Exhale, knee to elbow, inhale, float the heel, heel up. And then our next exhale, set that foot between the hands, gluing that back foot down, warrior one pose. Warrior one pose. Okay, let me face towards you on this one and then I'll turn back to the side. Both heel the toes on the ground on both feet here. Shoulders rolled down away from our ears. Deep bend into that front knee, hips slightly coming forward and shoulders squaring up. Excellent. Let's lengthen the front of our body just a little bit. Palms up to the sky, open up and bring those shoulder blades together. I'm gonna to turn to the side right here. Got it, open up. Even arching a little bit more into that lower back like we're, like we're trying to just Sit back and lay down in this pose. Keeping that front knee bent as best as we can. Excellent. Good. So, from here, let's come back to Warrior One. Take a nice big inhale on the exhale. We'll open up to Warrior Two. Front and foot and knee stay right where they're at. All we do is point that left foot to the left side of the room, perpendicular to that front, and arms nice and long, front and back. Think about nice, tall posture, ears over shoulders, over our hips. Excellent job. Moving towards a reverse warrior, let's exhale, flip that front hand, and inhale, lift that front hand. And then let's talk about that back hand a little bit, a little shoulder opener. Bring it behind your back like a, like a belt or even rest on your tailbone, and then draw that elbow back. I'm going to turn a little bit to the side so you can see what that looks like. So draw the elbow back. Okay, so you feel a deeper stretch onto that shoulder. Awesome. From here, we're gonna reach even higher. So take 
that right knee and lengthen that leg. Still a soft bend in that knee and keep reaching higher. Keep drawing that elbow back. And then keep that arm right there, that left arm right there. As we take that right arm, begin reaching forward as far as you can go. Just with that right arm, reach, 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 and then tip over, resting that hand above or below our knee on that front leg, that back hand, that left hand still behind us. You feel that stretch up top? Feel that lengthening up top through the shoulder, through the chest. Good. Draw that elbow back to the back of the room just a little bit more. Excellent. So this is definitely an exercise in humility right here. Definitely an exercise in less is more. Okay. Focusing more up top than down below in triangle right now. Awesome. Let's exhale back to warrior two, both arms out. Shake that back arm out just a little bit. Good. Let's cartwheel those arms around and down. Step back to plank position. Then we'll go through a vinyasa flow. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, come down. Inhale, up. And exhale, back down, downward facing dog. Awesome. This time, left heel floats up nice and high. We'll put a bend in that knee and open the hips, stretching out the left side of our body. Ooh, all right. From here, two knee pulls. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, that heel up. And again, exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, the heel, third time through. Exhale, bring that foot, set it down between those hands. Right foot glues down as we float on up to warrior one. Just gonna stay to the side this time. Excellent. So let's open up our hearts to the sky. Palms to the sky, squeeze it between those shoulder blades. So strengthening and lengthening at the same time. Strengthening our upper and middle part of our back and our lower back as we're arching back. And then lengthening through our chest and our shoulders. So a nice deep bend in our left knee. Good, come back to warrior one, take a nice big inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Step in that right foot. Make it perpendicular to that left, arms nice and long. All right, very nice. Nice deep breathing right here. Good posture in warrior two. Two of the reverse warrior, exhale, flip that left hand, inhale, lift that left hand to the sky. Right hand crawls behind our back at the tailbone or completely behind our back and then start drawing that elbow back to keep a nice stretch going on that right shoulder. But still keep reaching nice and tall through those left fingers and into our ribs. Deep bend in that left knee still. Good. Engage with that breath. Make sure that breath is still free flowing and working for you. And then let's lengthen that front leg. Keep reaching a little bit higher. Keep that left hand nice and high and that right hand behind our back. Moving towards triangle pose. Take your biggest inhale and on the exhale begin reaching as far forward as you can. Reach, 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 and then tip over, left hand above or below the knee on the leg, back hand still behind you, and maybe a peek up toward the sky, drawing that right elbow still towards the back of the room. Great stretch up top, is it? Isn't it? Good. All right. As we exhale, come back to warrior two. Awesome, and then we'll cartwheel around and down, press it back to plank position. Let's go through our vinyasa flow. Remember, you can always go plank to downward dog, or rock forward, exhale down, inhale up, and exhale back to down dog. This time, we'll float that right heel up toward the sky. We're gonna bring it through straight to warrior two. Right to warrior two. So we're flattening that back foot, front knee and toes in alignment, arms nice and long. Excellent. Move towards humble warrior from warrior two. Bring those arms behind our back. Interlock those fingers or rest them on your hips like we did before. Draw those hands past our tailbone, shoulders down and away from our ears. Lift our hearts. Breathe in and then exhale. Stay nice and long, crown of our head to our tailbone. As we come to the inside of that right leg, hands float up to the sky. Top of the head, crown of the head drops to the floor. And find your expression of warrior two, humble warrior. At any point in time, you can release those hands. 
All right. And then together, let's all release those hands. Maybe bring them down to the ground. Keep that depth right there. Right hand to the inside of that right leg. Left hand up toward the sky, right angle pose. Now, if this is a little bit too deep for you, use that block and lift the floor up a little bit higher or forearm on top of the leg, okay? Find a true expression of right angle that works for you. Stacking through those shoulders and maybe extending and bring in that left hand behind our back, behind our back, opening up our heart just a little bit more. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna find half moon now. So bring that right hand to the outside of that right leg, either on the block or on the ground. Left leg begins lifting up off the ground as we lengthen that right. Thinking about our alignment here, trying to just stack from fingertip to fingertip, vertically, and crown of our head to our heel. Horizontally. Good. Well, we find our expression of this pose, our true nature of this pose, doesn't matter how high or low that foot is, doesn't matter if we're wobbling and falling out of this. We're going to go to twisted half moon now, keeping that left foot up off the ground, bring both hands down, square up hips and shoulders. I'm going to turn towards you, square up hips and shoulders, and then bring that right hand up toward the sky. So that left leg will undoubtedly just lower down naturally. Hips stand square, but open up your heart to the right side. And then bring both hands down. Set that left foot down, a little bend in those knees, and stand tall. Stand tall. Good. So pyramid with a little bit of eagle arms. So walk that back foot and maybe a half step, both heels a toe on the ground, and square up hips and shoulders, arms out nice and wide, right foot forward, left foot back, and then drop that left elbow in to the right elbow, or just into the bicep. Then either give yourself a hug, back of the hands together, or palms facing each other. When we get there, draw those thumbs forward towards the front of the room, and those elbows a little higher, Keep the length of your spine nice and tall, and hinge, and hinge. Soft bend in that right knee, not a deep bend. As we hinge, we feel that center of gravity, that weight of those arms. Stretching between those shoulder blades, rounding those shoulders out. Breathe deeper, fill those lungs. Two more breaths. Very nice. Let's release those hands, step back to plank position, vinyasa flow, and we'll meet back in downward facing dog. Exhale, come down, inhale. Up to cobra upward dog and press back downward dog. Good, this time left foot floats up to the sky, three-legged dog, go ahead and bring it through to the front of our mat, warrior two. Left foot forward, right foot perpendicular to that front foot. Arms out nice and long. Excellent. Again, good posture here is over shoulders, over hips, not leaning forward, not leaning back, just standing nice and tall. So again, bring those hands behind our back, open up those shoulders, lift our heart up to the sky, drop those hands down, reach nice and high with the crown of our head, Breathe in, and then begin hinging to the inside of that left leg. Stay nice and strong, nice and long, crown of our head to our tailbone. And then when we get to our version of the bottom here, drop the crown of your head, float those hands up nice and high. Strengthen those legs, calmness of our mind. Keeping this depth right here, whenever you're ready, go ahead and release those hands. And then find your expression of right angle pose, ground, block, left form on the leg. So much so that you can still breathe freely. Your shoulders and ribs are stacked. You feel the right alignment. It feels just right for you. Maybe that right hand now behind the back. Maybe a little peek up at the sky. That's a way to do it. Okay, half moon pose. Let's release those arms. Bring that left hand to the outside, the pinky toe side of that left foot, 
and begin floating that right foot off the ground, lengthening that left, reaching that right hand up toward the sky. Again, lengthening on two planes, horizontal and vertical. Crown of our head to our heel, point those right toes. Dorsiflex means coming towards the shins. We're just sharing that because that's a little bit of body awareness, trying to feel every aspect of this pose. Fingertip to fingertip, crown of the head to the heel. As we square up, keep that right leg up off the ground. Both hands come down, left hand floats to the hip or up toward the sky. Now, if you feel adventurous, maybe trying to peek at that left hand up toward the sky. Sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes I don't. Just I'll take what my body will give me, I'll take what my practice will present to me. Awesome. As we bring both hands down, just a half step back, set that right foot down, and then we'll bend in that left knee, stand tall. Stand tall. Good. Left foot forward, right foot back. Square up those hips and shoulders, eagle arms yet again. Let's take those arms out nice and wide. Left elbow into the right elbow this time and find your eagle arms. Again, if your palms together, thumbs tracking towards the front of the room, elbows lift. Breathe in nice and tall and exhale, hinge. Trying to keep hips and shoulders square to the mat, square to the floor. That's beneath you. Last breath here, inhale and exhale. And then let's bring both hands down, step back to plank, drop to those knees, child's pose. Child's pose, press on back to child's pose. Good. A little bit of a dynamic child's pose here. So hips to our heels, knees out wider than those feet. Maybe start walking those fingers a little bit forward. Just a little bit of grip, a little bit of, little bit of grip through those fingertips as we walk forward, feeling that deeper stretch in the, to our shoulders and the middle part of our back. Good. Keeping that left hand right where it's at. Let's take that right hand and creep it underneath, thread the needle, bring it under that left armpits. Good. Maybe palm up toward the sky if that feels all right. And just gently rest. Right side of your head onto the mat. Keep crawling that left hand forward. And a gentle stretch on the outside of the right shoulder. All right. Then we'll give a little bit of love to that left shoulder. So let's reach that left hand up to the sky. Make sure it doesn't put too much pressure on your head. Which means we're pushing our right arm into the ground now. And then maybe that left hand onto our tailbone. Just bring it behind our back. Make sure there's not too much pressure on your head. Push with that right arm off the ground. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Bring that left hand back right in front of you. And then the right hand back right in front of you. And walk both hands now to the left corner of our mat, sitting back into angled child's pose, stretching out the right side of our body. Excellent. I'm going to turn to the side from here. You stay right there. Staying right here in this angled child's pose as we lift up. That gives us clearance to bring the right leg through. Just going to bring that right leg through, both hands to the end step. Stay on that left knee for a little runner's lunge. We're going to do a little bind here. So we're going to put a bend into that left knee. We're going to open up that right hip just a little bit and then reach back with our right hand towards that left foot. Now either binding on top of the foot or the ankle, or just pointing to that foot and saying, you know, there you are. There you are. This is, a, this is what my body's giving me today. And just finding the gratitude in what we're able to do versus what we're unable to do. And then press that foot and ankle into your hand. Open up your shoulder and your heart just a little bit more. Very nice. Let's come back front and center with those hands. From this runner's lunge, we're going to come all the way up to a knee lift. I'm going to face you as I do that. 
because we're gonna go right into a balanced posture from here. So come all the way up, big length, lift that left knee up, good. And we're gonna find eagle pose. Now, we just did eagle arms, let's complete that pose, crossing that left leg over that right leg and squeezing them together and sitting down into that right leg, arms out, nice and wide. Bring that left elbow into the right and those arms. Make those eagle arms. Whew. All right. Strong legs right here. We're going to keep pressing into those legs. And then we're going to fly our eagle, which means we're going to hinge at our hips a little bit more. Arms come back by our hips, hinge down, bringing our ribs on top of those legs, hands back. Spread those wings and fly. Yeah, as we come out, unravel that pretzel we call our legs. Hands to the ground, press back the plank, knees down, child's pose. Child's pose. And again, walking those fingertips into our mat, walk them forward, feel that stretch, that lengthening through our shoulders in the middle of our back. And we'll take that left hand now and thread the needle, bring it underneath. Palm up toward the sky, set that left side of our head down gently on our mats, and a gentle stretch on the outside of that left shoulder. Keep walking those right fingertips forward, and then we'll eventually lift that right hand up. So make sure we got a good support on that left arm, and we're not putting too much pressure on the side of our head. A little twist right there, and then eventually that right hand behind our back. Nice deep breaths, feeling in control and feeling that this posture is the right thing for you. Hips to heels, just sitting back as best we can. Awesome, let's bring that right hand back and then bring that left hand back. Crawling forward just a little bit and then walk both hands to the right corner of our mat, angled child's pose, hips still to the heels and breathe into that left side of our body through those ribs and down to our hips. Good. And now we're going to come on up and bring that left leg through. Got some clearance on that left side. Runner's lunge staying on our knee. I'm going to turn to the side as we do this. And a little bind right here. Put a bend in that right knee. Left right hand stays right there. Left hand reaches back and either just points to that foot and says, there it is. Okay, see, I'm having trouble getting to it. Okay, and I eventually got to it. And then I push that ankle or foot into that left hand, just to open up my heart a little bit more, maybe look up. Stretch into the shoulder, lengthening those chest muscles. Yeah. Exhale, release back forward. Awesome, from this runner's lunge. Launching all the way up. Big time move right here to that knee lift, come on up. Lift nice and high, and then bring that right knee, right above our left knee, cross those legs and squeeze them together, then sit down into that left leg. Arms out, nice and wide. Right elbow into that left elbow, eagle arms. Just feel the difference in those eagle arms now. You can already feel that, elbows up, hold. Keep squeezing those legs together and hold. Feel that tension of those legs and hold. Let those elbows point those thumbs forward or whatever version of arms you got. And now let's fly our eagle, let's hinge down. Hinge down. Good, and float those arms back. Float those arms back. Keep hinging, keep floating those arms. Reach back. Awesome. Let's exhale. Hands down, unlock those legs, feet down. Let's come on to our hands and knees. Perfect. All right. From our hands and knees, I'll turn to the side just for a moment right here. Okay, a little cat and cow, a little cat and cow. We got some seated versions, or did some seated versions earlier. Well, inhale up, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and exhale, 
Press those hands in. Strength through the shoulders, round to that spine. Inhale, they'll look up. And exhale, round. Just engage the core. Lift that spine as long or as high as you can. Good. Inhale, up. Arch and drop the belly down. And inhale, round. So notice how those shoulders feel right now. The upper body, that's how it feels for you. Good. All right. Keeping those toes, or getting those toes curled. Sometimes you can't count, we don't curl those toes. Okay, so curling those toes and bringing those feet and knees together, we're just gonna sit back onto our heels. So it's a little variation of hero's pose. Instead of being on the shoelace side of our feet, we're curling our toes in hero. Okay, and I'm gonna face towards you because I wanna do a little something extra. We're gonna stay right here. Curl those toes, get a nice stretch through our arches and through our heels. Yeah. All right. And we're gonna work our neck yet again. Let's bring our chin to our chest and lift your left shoulder. Whew, relax your jaw space between your teeth. And then just a little bit again, that left hand on the right ear, just a little bit of pressure. And then take that right hand and reach it out to the side and just start drawing a circle. Start drawing a circle with that right hand. And then we'll come back to center with the head, right ear, right shoulder. Bring that right hand to the left ear and draw a circle with that left hand. Just pressing the palms to the side of the room. And that was all really meant to take our minds off of what's going on with our legs right here. Because that's sometimes an agonizing pose to be in, hero's pose. No, I'm just kidding. It's not a distraction. All right. So moving into, of course, we got to do rabbit pose today. we got to do rabbit pose, right? So keeping those uh, toes curled and those heels up right there. We're going to bring our hands to all four and get into all fours and get into rabbit pose. So get to rabbit pose. We take that left hand grab onto our left heel. Okay, create that bind, make sure there's a lot of energy right there and strength. And then engage our core as we bring the crown of our head towards the ground. So squeeze those abs and have that strength and take that right hand and grab your right heel. A lot of energy holding onto those heels and then round your spine, and bring the crown of your head down towards the floor. Now sometimes folks set their heads down. I like to try and just leave my head skimming off the floor, engaging my core a little bit extra. Keep breathing through this. Squeeze those abs. And then to come out of rabbit pose. Okay, we don't pull the rabbit out of the hat. We just release that left arm, set it down, and then that right arm, set it down. Good. And then come on out. All right. Good. Let's find a seated position. Uh, seated position. All right. So from this seated position, a little tabletop, just to get us off our hands and knees. We're gonna be back on them in just a moment. Okay, a little tabletop is good for our shoulders and hearts as well. So let's get those fingertips facing towards our feet. Knees bent, feet flat on the floor, about hip distance apart with those knees and those feet. And we're gonna draw those heels up, lift. Lift those heels, or lift those hips, I'm sorry. Trying to maintain our shoulders right above our wrists. Nice neutral spine, so just allow your head to maybe just lay back a little bit, pushing through those shoulders, trying to avoid getting our head caught up into a turtle shell. And lift your heart just a little bit more. As we exhale, we can release down. Good. And we'll do that just one more time. Just one more time. Good. So let's get lock those feet in and inhale those hips up. Nice and tall. Good. And you can feel that lengthening right through the shoulders, right through our chest muscles. And push through those hands, lift up just a little bit higher. So if there's a string attached to your sternum, try to lift just a little bit more. Keep those hips lifting as well. Awesome. And then exhale and release. Very nice. So let's come back to all fours. 
back to all fours. Okay. And from all fours, we're going to take that left leg and lengthen it out, toes down towards the ground, and heel back. I'm going to turn just to the side so we can see that. All right, then I'm going to begin just tapping that toe out to the side, so out to the left, and then up and over to that right side. And then peeking over when I bring it to the left, peek over my left shoulder, and then peek over my right shoulder. Get a little core engagement here, that space between our ribs and hips. All right. We'll do that two more times, out to the left, and then up and over. And this last time we bring it to the right, keep it right there, and tuck that left knee behind your right knee, into that little pocket behind your right knee, and sit back, sit back. Okay, let me grab my block, and just sit on back to where, ideally, our knees are stacked, I shouldn't say ideally, because everyone's different, right? But if this is not lovely, then just bring that right knee up a little bit higher. Okay, otherwise, staying right here, we're gonna go into cow face pose. Cow face pose. Good. So sit nice and tall. We can also use a block or something else that resembles a block and elevate our hips. That makes us a little bit more consumable. Let's take our left hand and bring our palm to the middle of our back middle of our back. Good, elbow up toward the sky. And initially take that right hand and just nudge that left elbow back a little bit more, bring it right to the middle of our back. Get a nice stretch in through the shoulders and the triceps. Good. And then we'll take that right hand, bring it behind our back, palm facing. I'm sorry, back of the hand facing the middle of our spine. And just see, you know, whether those fingers touch or not. And there's no requirement for those fingers to touch. And my phone is series trying to call me right now on my watch. So apparently I was jamming into something that wasn't appropriate. Okay. Better than, uh, there was one time in class I had, I had, in the middle of the class and my phone started dialing 911. Or I'm sorry, my watch did. And I was like, oh goodness, that could be good. All right, let's release out of this. Come back to those all fours. Not good when your watch starts dialing. 911 in the middle of class. Okay, we'll do the other side. So lengthen that right leg now. Toes down to the ground, press that heel back like we're doing a little calf stretch. We're gonna tap those right toes out to the right and up and over that left. Yeah. And feeling the sides of our body. Little core engagement right there. We'll go two more times with it. And then last one, and when we bring those right toes to the left side, tuck that right knee behind that left into that little pocket back there. And then again, sit back, left knee above the right. Okay, I'll put that block underneath my hips. Just depends on the day. You know, sometimes they feel good, sometimes Sometimes not. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't, right? Okay. Sit nice and tall. Let's bring that right hand now and bring the palm of that hand between our shoulder blades and onto our spine, right elbow up to the sky. And then take that left hand and just nudge that elbow along a little bit, get a nice stretch through our tricep and our shoulders. Awesome. Now with that left arm, bring it behind our back behind our back and the back of the hand on our spine. And you know, the, the picture in the textbook would say that these hands are together, but you know, uh, we don't, we're not in the textbook. They didn't invite me to take a photo off for the te textbook because if they did, then they would notice that my hands aren't together. Okay, you can't see that right now, but this is, this is where my body's at. This is my true expression of cow face pose with my ears and with my face, which is where my knees are crossed. That's where the cow face comes from. Excellent, let's release out of this. Let's release out of this. Now we're gonna go into supported fish. Now if you have a block or a couch pillow or maybe a blanket or something like that, you can roll up, that would work. A foam roller would work, okay? 
I'm gonna just use a, I'm gonna start with nothing and I'll show you how to do this with nothing and then I'm gonna use a block. So a little bend in our knees, heels down on the ground. And we're gonna tuck our hands, palms facing down, just right under our back pockets, right under our butts, right under our hips. Okay, elbows down to the ground. Okay, we can lengthen our legs then. And then just let the crown of our head fall down towards the floor as we press through our shoulders and lift our heart. Squeezing those elbows toward each other, squeezing those shoulder blades toward each other, lengthening the front side of our body through our chest and shoulders. So that's the feeling that we want. Okay, so a little bit more moderate approach to that is take that block and put it right in the middle of our back and then sit back, either head on the ground or if you have two blocks or another pillow, support that head and just allow your arms, your elbows to your hands to come down to the ground beside you, okay? Now if that block's not enough on the side, then we stand it up just a little bit more and just so it's on the length of our spine. Heart opener, shoulder opener, breathe through this. Taking care of the front side of our body right here. Taking care of our spine. Shoulder health is more than just taking care of our shoulders. It's the strengthening in the middle of our back. It's the lengthening of the front side of our body. It is the mobility of our shoulders. And again, when we encounter stress, compounded with situations where we're hunched over a lot, whether that's, again, our physical posture or our mental posture. That creates a lot of agitation on our shoulders. And it creates more conditions for impingements, injury, just a lot of uncomfortable stuff. So it's important to have that shoulder health and that shoulder care. All right, when you're done with fish pose, you can come out of this and we'll just find our Shavasana pose. Find Shavasana. Find our gushy little bunny peep Shavasana pose. So just finding our spots on the mat. I'm gonna go turn my light down uh, where we're sprawled out on our mats. We're sprawled on our mat. Whatever you find comfort in and where we can find stillness for about three minutes. If you're following along on the playlist, song Give Thanks, Give Thanks by Inyari. It's a great song, I don't know why I need this block. It's a great song. Great finishing song, Give Thanks. Perfect song for today. So let's find that comfortable spot on our mats. Allowing our eyelids to just drape over our eyes nice and gently without without having to force those eyelids to stay closed. Allowing our face to relax, removing any facial expressions and reaching in to our body and just trying to discover any parts that might be just holding on to muscle engagement or tension. And on your next series of exhales, release that tension from those areas. Allow that breath then to become nice and normal, like a normal everyday breath. Allow your body to become still, fully committed onto your mat and fully right here. Remembering that we can't do yoga if you are not right here. When we find stillness, we're able to find that stillness not only of our body, but in the spaces in our minds, between the chatter, between the thoughts, between the stories that we tell ourselves. But also in those stories are the true nature of ourselves, of who we are. Recognizing that in order to love others, and I believe that it's impossible to love others more if we don't love ourselves the same way. And so finding that true nature of who we are. And of course, we express that today in physical postures, 
That's where we've applied our mindfulness and concentration. But that's also applicable off our mats as well. Being able to allow ourselves to be more mindful about the things that bring us joy, the things that bring us calm, the things that allow us to just be who we are. We all know that feeling when we get surrounded by people. We get surrounded by people that just allow us to be who we are. We also know that feeling when we get surrounded by people where perhaps we act differently or their actions cause us to act differently. And so we know the compare, we know the contrast, and we know that through mindfulness and through consciousness of that, we find a better path by be true, being true and honest to ourselves. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have had this practice today, to share this time with each and every one of you, to allow us to express our practice in our own way, something that allows us to then experience yoga that's truly meant for us today. Our closing message, being truthful and employing satya means being there for yourself even when you fail. Even when no one else is there for you, it's when you're able to hug yourself, pick yourself up and say, it's okay, I'm human, and this is just a part of my journey, and I'm learning. I honor the love and light in each of you as it's also within me. Namaste.